Oh, how's it going, everyone? Steve, here with you to expose more nonsense. Could use a lot worse words to describe this stuff, but um, I intend on addressing this stuff because I got real sick of it in 2016, and I'm already sick of it now. Um, and I made it abundantly clear, I'm going to be talking about Bernie on my page, all right? I support the guy through and through. He's not the most perfect human being in the world. He's never going to be, but he is astronomically miles ahead of any candidate that is going to run in terms of what he wants to do, how much effort he's going to actually put into doing what he says he wants to do for us. And he's by far the least corrupt candidate running. I, You know, it's actually very sad to watch people try to point out his corruption. And because he's so much genuinely better than these other candidates, they have to concoct stuff. Just like, I read an article about um, I forgot her first name, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. And I swear to God, it, it was a New York Post article, which is already a conservative rag as far as I'm concerned. And they were, you know, getting on her case about her, you know, green plan and her, you know, efforts to want to uh, <laughs> fight global warming and climate change as much as we possibly can. And their biggest, the one criticism they had for, you, for, the, for her, I kid you not, was she takes Ubers to work sometimes. She takes gas-guzzling Ubers to work. First of all, you don't know what vehicle she's driving. She may be going in hybrids, for all you know. But it's just, everybody takes Ubers. Okay, or Lyft or any of those other things. That is literally the biggest hypocritical criticism they can make of her is that she's taken Ubers to from her home to her office with regularity. And they're like, you know, there's there's a um, subway stop right near her office. Why doesn't she, you know, ride the subway and you know keep the air a little cleaner by not taking an uber and i'm like okay fine maybe there is a subway station near her office but is there a subway one near where she lives because if there isn't she's not going to take the subway to work because she can't even get to a spot without it being a major inconvenience to get to the subway to get to work and second of all this is a woman who has become incredibly well known she is very outgoing, boisterous. She says what she feels and she expresses what she believes and she actually obviously is out there fighting for what she wants. And she's got a bit of a target on her back, especially with this recent Amazon stuff, which, ugh, fuck Amazon as far as I'm concerned. They are, they're such scum. I understand them not moving in New York to jobs out of the city, but they're scum, in my opinion. And I really... <laughs> I really try not to use them that often, but, you know, here's someone who's really well known, um, who, you know, she's a really, really well known female political figure, and you're telling her to hop on the subway? Do you have any idea how potentially dangerous that could be for her? It is much, much safer for her to call an Uber, you know, just like a taxi, and get herself from one place to another without subjecting herself to the elements. But anyway, this video is not about that situation, but it's about the way people are trying to manipulate the situation in terms of these people that are actually fighting for things that the politicians and the media and so on and so forth um, are trying to, uh, it's a threat to them. So here is something that got, and a lot of people have addressed this already on Facebook, but I saw this and I decided to look at it for myself. This is a, a post that was done, I'm going to read it word for word, um, in relation to Bernie Sanders having a Chicago rally. Um, and his rallies have been pretty much just as successful as they were in 2016. People haven't forgotten about Bernie. Here's what it says. Someone on Facebook points out Bernie Sanders is having his Chicago rally at Navy Pier in a neighborhood that is 4% black that is basically inaccessible via public transportation and costs either $30 for parking or between $30 to $40 for an Uber ride. 
hashtag Bernie so black, hashtag socialism. So I don't know if this, this posting was a warning to people, like this is what's being said on Facebook and it's nonsense or something, or if this is somebody saying, yeah, look at Bernie, Mr. Socialist, Mr. This and That, having his rally in a white neighborhood that's super expensive to get to, you know, trying to imply he's a politician like the rest of them. Now, there's really four points posted here. One is that it's in a neighborhood that has a very low black population, 4%. I'll get it out of the way right now. I looked up the demographics of the neighborhood. It's called Streeterville. That's the, technically the neighborhood that surrounds where the pier is. And it is 4% black. So I'm going to get that out of the way. That is the one factual thing about this. But that in and of itself does not imply that Bernie is trying to stay away from the black population, to stay in an all-white neighborhood. I very highly doubt the race of a given neighborhood played any part in their decision. They needed a place that was pretty big and open because Bernie gets a lot of people at his rallies and that was probably the place they fell on. And I very highly doubt the demographics of the people in the area, unless it was considered a super dangerous area that Bernie shouldn't be subjecting himself to, I very highly doubt the demographics of the area played any part in the selection of this Navy Pier area as the place where he would hold his rally. I think the biggest objective was we need a big space because we're going to probably have 20, 30,000 people there, if not more. All right, so that's the one fact, and I don't even think it bears any real significance in the overall thing. Then there's the other points made, which is one... This area, the uh, Navy Pier, is basically inaccessible via public transportation. That's one. And costs either $30 for parking, that's point two, or between $30 to $40 for an Uber ride. Those are the three points. It's all about people needing to get there and how it's going to cost a lot of money to get there. So the obvious criticism is, oh, Bernie, you support the poor people and are so against the top 1%, and yet you're having your rally in an area that only people that can throw a bunch of money around for transportation can get there. It implies you pretty much have to get an Uber in order to get there. Or if you drive your own car there, you're going to be stuck with a huge bill. Okay, I don't know what parking prices are like in the city of Chicago, but if you're a major city, especially if you are in a major urban part of the city, you know, and in my case, like downtown Portland, parking is expensive. That's how it is in every major city, all right? It's, you know, I know in Portland, it's just a cash grab for the most part. They keep raising the prices um, in terms of uh, finding a place to park and it's gotten so hard to find places to park that they've been over the last several decades they tear down buildings here and there just to build parking structures um the fact that it costs a lot to park in the city to park for a few hours to go see a rally it's not bernie sanders fault all right that is the city you know no matter what part of the city you put it in. If, if Bernie Sanders was holding a rally in Portland, I'm trying to make you know a city to city comparison. If he had it on the waterfront, it would be expensive for people to park there. If he had it up um, the other side of Union Station, it'd be expensive to park there. If he had it up in the West Hills, it'd be expensive to park. If he had it over by the Moda Center in the Rose Quarter just across the river, it would be expensive to park. No matter what part of the major city you try to hold a rally, it's gonna be expensive to park. Now, if he had something in the Moda Center like he did last year, um, um, that would be subject to, you know, hopefully the parking structures at Moda Center would be open and available, but still, uh, parking there isn't all that, isn't super cheap. So, that's just a necessity of being in a major American city, which Chicago is. So then we have... A neighborhood that is basically, or this Navy place, is basically inaccessible by public transportation. It took no more than me glancing at a Google map image of the area and noticing that right in that area, there's a bus icon, which means there's a bus stop there. And there's a bus stop right there where five different buses go to. These are buses number 2, 29, 65, 66, and 124. And they come from a variety of different areas. They're not all just coming from the east, so, you know, people from the north and south are screwed. Um, only, I think, one or two of these buses run with not a lot of frequency. Like, three of these buses run at least every... Some of them run every, like, five minutes. 
you know, and some of them run, you know, 10 to 20 minutes. So there is, and I checked, it's not just the weekend, or it's not just weekdays, weekends, several of these buses travel with fairly consistent frequency. And I don't know if the um, rally um, is, a, again, I didn't see the dates for it, so I don't know if it's a weekday or a weekend. But yeah, these buses all run with at least moderate frequency. I think the number two is more of like a, a morning, afternoon kind of rush hour type bus. But these other ones run fairly frequently. So if you need to take public transportation, you're good, you have multiple options that run fairly frequently to get you within, you know, like two blocks, two or three blocks of where this Navy Pier is. So basically inaccessible via public transportation. I can see why they said basically, because the fact of the matter is it is accessible by public transportation. But then beyond that, um, costs either $30, or $30 for parking or between $30 to $40 for an Uber ride. Now, Uber, um, it varies based on, you know, how you're traveling. If you want a nicer car with a more experienced driver, that costs more money. Um, if you're traveling as a group and you need a larger vehicle, that can cost you more money. But if you're doing the run-of-the-mill Uber ride, you are a person who wants to go see Bernie, you don't want to drive there, you don't want to take the bus, or you can't for whatever reason, you want to take an Uber. She, um, this thing says $30 to $40 for an Uber ride. Well, I looked up for the Chicago area, the costs of an Uber ride. And this is, again, this is just your person having an Uber driver come pick you up and drive you somewhere. Base fee is a dollar seventy nine, and uh, the booking fee is a buck eighty five. That rounds out to three dollars and sixty four cents. So if you're the bare minimum, thirty dollars for an Uber ride, and you take that little away for you know the basic fees, you have twenty six dollars and thirty six cents of actual driving before you hit thirty dollars in Uber, paying for an Uber. The mileage is eighty one cents a mile. This this is what Uber says. That means for $26.36, 81 cents a mile, you can go approximately 32 32 and a half miles for, before you hit $30, all right? That means somebody from Gary, Indiana could drive to this Navy Pier before they'd be spending $30 on an Uber. Driving from a different state at the bottom of Lake Michigan, or near the southern edge of Lake Michigan, all the way up into Chicago. So before you'd even dream of spending $30, much less $40, on an Uber, you know, again, if you're a big group of people, it might cost a little more. If you want a nicer car, it might cost a little more. But you still, th those are luxuries that you're making the decision whether you want to do them or not. And if you're a group of people getting an Uber, you can split the pay so it's not that, you know, it's not that expensive. One person may pay for it now and the rest of you pay him back. $30 for an Uber, there's six of us. I'll pay the 30 now. You other five each give me five bucks and we're all paying five bucks for an Uber to do a really long trip to go see Bernie. Not that big of a deal. But if you're doing the run-of-the-mill Uber, you literally would have to live more than 30 miles away from this Navy Pier, all right? So you'd have to be really, really far away. You'd have to be outside of the Chicago city limits, pretty far outside of the Chicago city limits, before it would cost you $30 to take an Uber to the Navy Pier to see Bernie Sanders. So <laughs> this is all just a bunch of... A bunch of nonsense and it's ongoing even at minor levels like this they can't even let bernie sanders have a damn rally at a damn pier in damn chicago without having to spin it in some direction the democratic primary is over 10 months away and people are doing everything they can to smear him at every possible end and you notice there is practically no criticism going around about these other candidates who are predominantly establishment Democratic candidates, which means most of them probably have a good number of skeletons in their closet. They're not all scum, but I'm sure these people are a lot more either corrupt or corruptible than Bernie Sanders will ever be, and that makes Bernie Sanders a threat, so they have to just spin, 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 degrade, 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 just kick Bernie in the face, and they're, they're scared to hell of Bernie Sanders that they're going this hard at him so long 
before the primaries. They didn't bother doing it in 2016 because they didn't realize what a viable candidate he was going to become. Now they know the danger that is Bernie and the people that support him, and it is so imperative. Do not listen to this shit, at least without doing your own research. It took me, you know, less than 10 minutes to find out this was a bunch of nonsense. Um, you know, I'm not saying if, if a criticism comes out about Bernie that it's always wrong, that it's never possibly true. Um, but for Bernie, like anybody else in this world, do your own damn research. Look at multiple sources. Or if it's something like this where you can literally look up the facts yourself. You can look up the cost of Uber. You can look up public transportation. All of that stuff. You can look up the demographics of the area. You don't need a news source to tell you that information. All right? Don't just blindly believe this crap. Because most media outlets are controlled by... People of great power who are very threatened by Bernie Sanders. All right? So they're going to use their media outlets to smear him. That's what they did in 2016, and they've pretty much been doing it off and on ever since against a guy who's done more for this country than any of them ever have. In fact, he's trying to reverse the shitstorm that these people have created, you know? He's fighting with all his might. The guy's almost 80 years old, and he's still out there kicking ass every day. He doesn't have to care, you know? <laughs> He's not going to be here, I mean, likely, in 2015 when who knows if we're even still going to be alive by then. You know, he could just sit back, relax, and say, the hell with it, I'm done. I did what I could. But he keeps going out there and fighting. He's going to continue fighting until he has no fight left in him. And I appreciate that and I respect that. The guy goes out there and busts his ass harder than I do. And I bust my ass pretty hard. I'm, f what, 45 years younger than him. So just don't buy into this shit. Do your own thinking. Do your own analysis. There's a lot. There always has been. But in this case in particular, there's a lot of misinformation out there. That's all I'm saying. Catch you guys later.